اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم لقد من اللہ علی المؤمنین اس با صفیہم رسولا من انفسہم یتلو علیہم آیاتہ و یزکیہم و یعلمہم الكتاب والحکمہ و ان کانو من قبل لفی دلال مبین بعد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم قد افلح من تزکا و ذکر اسم ربی فسلہ بل تو سرون الحیات الدنیا والآخرت خیر و ابقا بعد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم و انکا لا علا خلق عظیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل الاغدتا من لسانی یفقہ قولی اللہم ارنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباع و ارنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابا اللہم انی اسلوک علما نافعا ورزقا طیبا و عملا متقبلا آمین یا رب العالمین Today انشاءاللہ we will have continuation about reflection from the life of Prophet Muhammad صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم Just to recap what I said last time that we talked about the very purpose of every Nabi and that was Tazkiyah purification of the hearts and that's what exactly was said in the ayah I just read from Surah Ali Imran and because once you have done Tazkiyah the purification of the heart then heart can see heart is like a mirror if it doesn't have any dust or any filth or any hijab or any obstacle any hindrance then this mirror can see exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to show him so we you will see the reality of life you will see darkness as darkness and light as light last time I also discussed about the key stone characteristics of the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I discussed about the ikhlaq of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his character and about which I mentioned the hadith that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent for the completion of the excellence of ikhlaq and Quran surah qalam is a witness وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And then I discussed two very important dimensions from the ikhlaq of the Prophet Muhammad صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم Number one was politeness, softness, gentleness And the second was respecting the feelings and emotions of others Understanding of the feelings and emotions of others Inshallah today I'm going to discuss a very important, I call it key stone characteristic of the habits of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi from the character of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi And that is love. Harisun alaykum bil mu'mineen raoofur rahim. This was such a unique quality of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi that he was a loving character. Remember for a da'i, for every Muslim, there got to be two characteristics. Number one is love and the second one he should always be optimistic. He should always look at the brighter side of the picture. He never should lose hope and loving is to the extent that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was loving even to his enemies. My brothers and my sisters, you know there is a mention of one disease in Quran, Shoha Nafsi. Even though this disease was mentioned in reference to stinginess, Bakhil, miser, but fact of the matter is Shoha Nafsi is a disease of heart in which the person who has that disease he sees everything with tunnel vision he sees everything at a very low scale not only that from dini 
religious perspective, even is in personal life. Because once you have this narrow vision that you see things at a small scale, it can affect all aspects of your life, your family life, your business life, your public life, and your religious and spiritual life as well. When I talked about this characteristic of love of love in the hearts of a moment and optimism, wallahi, this brings a totally different horizon for you and me as a Muslim. Today I see that in Islam, wherever we talked about Muslims, we see that tunnel vision. We hate on the basis of color. We hate on the basis of this person is from that country and this person is from that region. We hate, we divide people on the basis of religion. Remember our first relationship with humanity at a human level. And for Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu I have mentioned this in my last khutbah as well. When it comes to social life, when it comes to society level, even enemies of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Jews and Christians of Medina, they did not have a single complaint against Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes, when they offended him from the dimension of deen religion, when they challenged him about the dignity of Islam, yes, then he confronted them. They were the ones that took the first step, step to violate the contract with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Otherwise, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never, never lost hope in anybody. He was always optimistic because this is one of the characteristics that I want to share with you. When you have this loving heart and you have optimism, you want to make sure that you keep peace in society. You don't want to create any kind of frictions in the society. You do not want to create any division in the society. And I can give you a very good example of that. In Medina, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even though he knew that who are the hypocrites, hypocrites, they were plotting against him. They were trying to defeat him. They were trying to make him fail. They were trying to deceive him. But remember, even in that society, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never disclosed never disclosed the names of hypocrites except to one sahabi hazrat hudayfa radiyallahu ta'ala anhu why was that even to his very closest people hazrat umar did not did not know hazrat abu bakr did not know who the hypocrites are why he kept it so secret because he wanted to make sure that life is about option and choices and life is about adjustment Everybody who lives around you, you have to make best use out of them. You cannot divide and leave people. Nobody in the society should be left out. And wallahi, this is such a principle that if we apply in our own homes, not all five kids are the same. Maybe one of the child, he is rebellious against parents, but he is your child. You have to make best use out of him. In society, in community, you cannot leave anybody, you know, behind. You have to make sure in this journey, we all move together. My brothers and my sister, this is such a great lesson from the life of the Prophet Muhammad that he wanted to use every section of the society, even his enemies, even to hypocrites that make best use of them because as i said life is about choices life is about options and life is always about adjustment you can you cannot you cannot have everything according to how you want and what you want and that's why life is about you know adjustment my brothers and, and my sisters today inshallah i want to share with you a very you know, unique story. 
a story of a Sahabi and this story started as an enemy of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and I'm very sure very few of us might have heard this story of the Sahabi and the reason I wanted to bring this story today remember one thing as I said the job of a Dai the Muslim the one who wants to do the work of Dawa who wants to make himself the role model for the society he has to look not just today and yesterday he has to look into tomorrow as well as a Dai you are always hopeful about people and this is one of the unique thing of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he provided the comfort as much as he could Harisun Alaikum Haris that he was eager for the success of everybody Hazrat Suhail bin Amr Razi Allah Ta'ala Anhu you know you know let me introduce to you Suhail bin Amr who was Suhail bin Amr Suhail bin Amr was the most shrewd politician of Makkah one of the richest men of Makkah one of the biggest tribe leader of Makkah the man whose two sons Abdullah ibn Suhail ibn Amr became Muslim and migrated to Habsha first his other son about whom I will share with you few things in a in, in little bit his name was Abu Jundal Razi Allah Ta'ala Anho his sister became Muslim his brother became Muslim most of his family became Muslim but he was the only one that he hated so much that he did not want it to accept Islam if I give you the introduction of Suhail bin Amr he is the same man if you remember Suleh Hudaybiya was happening the Treaty of Hudaybiya who was representing Mushrikeen of Makkah Suhail bin Amr and when the treaty was ready to sign and there was a signature of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and with the name of the Prophet it was written Muhammad Rasulullah who objected on that that we don't accept Muhammad as a messenger of Allah if we have accepted him then there was no fight remove this and if you remember Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked Hazrat Ali remove just leave Muhammad just remove Rasulullah and we all know the story but I just want to remind you this was Suhail bin Amr that he was not even willing to see with name Muhammad Rasulullah in the same treaty if you remember there was one Muslim who came towards his Muslims of Hudaybiyah and he has all the shackles chains on his body and he got he basically ran away from the jail of Makkah and he was pleading to Muslims of Hudaybiyah in which Abu Bakr Razi Allah Ta'ala Anhu was there, Hazrat Umar was there, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was there and he was asking for help that take me with you to Medina you know I came all the way here I have freed myself from the jail of Makkah take me with you Medina Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam requested Suhail bin Amr Suhail the ink of that treaty have still not got dried it's still wet can you allow Abu Jundal Abu Jundal to go with us Medina and this was Suhail bin Amr he said no I will not allow because this is part of the treaty if any Muslim will run away from Makkah to Medina according to this treaty Muslims will hand over that person back to Makkah to Mushrikeen and Abu Jandal was not a stranger for Suhail bin Amr his own son and he refused to give up on Abu Jundal Razi Allah Ta'ala Anho this was Suhail bin Amr when he was he came to fight with Prophet Muhammad in the battle of Badr if you remember he was got cut prisoner of war and Hazrat Umar Razi Allah Ta'ala Anho said to Prophet Muhammad Ya Rasulullah this is the part of the story that I want to highlight more 
this shows the prophecy one of the sign that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the prophet of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was seeing in tomorrow what's coming tomorrow not just happening today or what has happened yesterday hazrat umar asked prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya rasulullah this suhail bin amr he talks too much against you urdu mein kehte hain charb zuban that he talks too much against you if you allow me i want to take out all of his teeth so then again he will not be able to talk against you and look at the answer of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this was the leader prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says umar this mouth of suhail which is causing discomfort for you today it's possible this same mouth will bring comfort for you tomorrow this mouth which is making you sad today there is a possibility the same mouth will bring happiness for you good news for you shadmani for you tomorrow time passes by fateh makkah happens and after fateh makkah we all know suhail bin amr was the one if you remember the famous words that when prophet sallam asked him the suhail what you think what i am going to do with you all he said you are a noble man and you are a son of a noble man and we expect from you nothing but nobility this was suhail bin amr who was talking to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allowed everybody he had forgiven everybody and suhail bin amr becomes muslim and this is hajjatul wida and about suhail bin amr after he became muslim people say that the commitment we had seen in suhail bin amr you know about reading quran and staying in haram and making supplications to allah subhanahu wa taala we had not seen such a devotion such a devotion in many muslims hajjatul wida prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this is narrated by hazrat abu bakr radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu that after the hajj this was a eid day and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was cutting his hair and hazrat abu bakr radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu says that we saw with our own eyes me and usman radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu suhail bin amr was standing next to the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he was trying to catch the hairs of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he was not letting those hair to go down and he was rubbing on his eyes and hazrat umar says this brought tears in our eyes this is the same suhail bin same suhail bin amr who yesterday was not ready to accept with the name of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam rasul allah and today look at his situation that he is not even letting the hair of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to go down and he is rubbing on his eyes the last thing which i want to share about suhail bin amr if you remember what i said when prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was saying to umar radhiyallahu ta'ala you know this mouth which is causing sadness for you today tomorrow this mouth may bring happiness good news for you prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away and if you remember what abu bakr radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu said in masjid nabawi and look at this there was no text messaging at that time there was no social media there was no phone call but this is all inspired by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Hazrat Abu Bakr radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu in Masjid An-Nabawi addressing the Muslims and saying to them when everybody is said Hazrat Abu Bakr says to them faman kana minkum ya'budu Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa inna Muhammadan qad mata wa man kana ya'budu Allah fa inna Allah hayyun la yamut that remember whoever among you was worshiping muhammad muhammad is gone he departed this dunya but whoever was worshiping allah subhanahu wa taala then remember fa inna allah hayyun la yamut that allah is the one who is ever living and never dies 
These words are said by Abu Bakr Anhu in Masjid al Nabi. And what is happening in Makkah? In Makkah, the people who became Muslim after Fatah Makkah, they decided they want to go back. They want to leave Islam. And there was a Bagawa. People God became rebellious against Islam. To this extent, that Muslim governor of Makkah had to go in hiding because his life was in danger in Makkah. Who was the man in Makkah who played the vital role? Suhail bin Amr gathered everybody in Haram, in Khana e Kaaba, in Makkah, and said to them very same words what Abu Bakr Razila Ta'ala Anho has said in Masjid Nabi. And Suhail bin Amr says to these people in Makkah, فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ يَعْبُدُوا مُحَمَّدًا صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَإِنَّ مُحَمَّدًا قَدْ مَعْتَى وَمَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ حَيٌّ لَا يَمُوتُ And he says to them, don't be among those people who became Muslim the very last and they want to leave Islam the very first. And everybody got on one page and they all came back under the shade of Islam. My brothers and my sisters, this was the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu when he was saying to Umar Razila Ta'ala, I know the same mouth. Look at the devotion. Because once people have taken this hijab, hijab of discrimination, hijab of not knowing, if once they have knew Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu they have come so close to him that he became the most beloved to everybody. And this is one of the examples that Suhail bin Amr, that who hated Prophet Sallallahu so much. And now look at his situation, that how much love he has for Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was happened only because that characteristic of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, loving, loving with the people. And wallahi, today I see we, we hate people, he is Hindu, he is Christian, he is Jew, he is Pakistani, he is Indian, he is Afghani. We hate, this, is, this person is not from my community, not from my tribe. We have developed this division. But as I said in my conclusion, I will remind you, my brothers and my sisters, as a Muslim, we should adopt these three characteristics of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Number one is softness, gentleness. And number two, understanding of the feelings and emotions of others. And number three, loving. And as a Dai, as I said, the Dai is always loving and optimistic because we do not lose hope in people until his last breath, until he is gone from this dunya. You never know who will revert, who will come back to Islam in the fold of Islam. You never know when one person can change. So always keep good hope and always be loving and gentle like the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the last, I will just remind you what I said in my first part also, to try to make use of every section, every person of the society. At home, at business place, in your community, you know, there is, everybody has some role to play. And as I said, life is all about choices and options and adjustments and life cannot be always according to how you want it and what you want it so it's all about adjustment and as a muslim we should always see a bigger picture we should always have you know we call it wusat e qalbi wusat e nazri we should always look at a bigger picture of life and we should always be accommodative for the people Allahu Akbar